the whiteboard. Is that to kind of shield signals uh, from the other? Yeah, side? it was. We had, uh, particularly two weeks ago, we were crossing paths with somebody that knew our system really well, uh, who coached with us before, and so yeah, we were just trying to avoid possibility of having any signals getting leaked because we have alternate signals, but we just yeah, it had to do with people that probably knew us pretty well. Is that, is that a route you guys will continue to use in the future, do you think? Probably in this day and age, you got to, because I promise you our signal guy has got binoculars on him. Uh, that's just the way it is. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how the business is, and that's what, the way it goes. Cool. That's why NFL guys talk with their board in front of them so mm -hmm. they don't get their lips red, and they're not even signaling. Cool. When do you think that kind of changed in college football? There's been a lot of talk about it this year, but it, it, that had nothing to do with us. It happened to be that we were playing with – against two guys that know our system really well. So we just, not that they're bad, they're great guys, but we wanted to make sure we weren't tipping anything. Have you felt like other teams have picked up on your signals in the past? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Um, but you just got to be smart. And we have multiple signalers. Um, we use multiple signals for the same thing, but I just think you got to be really careful because I know we're always trying to find stuff on the other team ourselves. How have you guys been able to uh, move the ball so effectively just all year? And can you can you continue that uh, against the Auburn's defense? You know, we need to. Obviously, it's a, a, a great challenge. The, the strength of their defense is their front four in particular, and then they have experienced linebackers. Um, you know, our kids have done a good job of coming out and competing. Don't think we did that in the second half the other day. That was disappointing. But, um, yeah, we expect to be able to go in there and scrap and do good things against them. You know, we've got a lot of football left, and – it's what we go to work for every day, and that's the goal. What, what, do, you, what do you think that was the change in the, in the third quarter where you guys were only able to, to call eight offensive plays that didn't really keep the ball a whole lot? Was, was there something different that they were doing in, in that period? No, they played with more intensity than we did, in my opinion, um, including my group, you know, who's been doing a good job. But we didn't, we didn't play with the tenacity in the third period that we needed to. Um, we weren't when we were running the ball. We weren't getting what we call efficient runs, which is at least four yards on first down. And when you do that, then second down's a little longer, and then it probably tends you to start throwing the ball more. So that kind of comes back on us, and we'll accept that responsibility. Um, in the fourth quarter, we started doing some things. They had their twos in, so um, I wish we'd done it against their ones in the third quarter. One of the the positives you can take away from from Saturday is, uh, is Elijah going over a thousand yards. I think the first. Thousand yard rusher you guys have had here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, with what, our staff for sure. What, what does it mean to see to see a guy go over a thousand? It's it's good, you know. Usually you feel like you walk around and think that we're good in the run game. You know, we've got this guy who does a good job. He's a physical player, and we've produced a thousand yard guy. Now we got to go get it some more. And when he's running good, obviously, and carrying the ball a whole bunch of times, like 25 times, we've been really good, and that's obviously our goal. Um, not so much this week, but it certainly will be in the last game. How do you replace a guy like that, like, like Elijah? I haven't given a lot of thought yet. I do really think that we've recruited well behind him. I really do, based on the guys that I've seen. And like Denzel's come back, and he really shows you. He had a lot of instinct that we were seeing, and you can see it again right away. Um, Duck obviously has a lot of ability. I think he'll flourish when he gets the reps. Um, Saunders can do some things. He's a physical style back, so... I haven't really given a lot of thought, you know. I want to make sure that Elijah goes out with some success here, in addition to having that record that he can leave with guys like Dallas Sandberg and feel like we've set this program in line to be really good in the future. Roughly of those a thousand yards that he has, how, how many of those are after contact? You guys can check. Probably a whole bunch. Yeah, it's up on the board upstairs. I haven't looked at it. I look at the O line board and the offensive goal board, but because we run so much inside zone which is his style. He's not a speed guy to the perimeter. Uh, the majority of that is probably after touch, to be honest with you. And that's his strength. And so we block inside zone pretty well, and he runs it well. But a lot of that's after contact. And I don't have the number. Shoemaker knows it. With uh, 35 uh, you know, straight carries, or 35 carries or 36 in, in three straight games for him, what does that kind of, you know, just 16 last week, what, what does that kind of speak to? I mean, I feel like some guys aren't even able to, to do that and, and continue to grind right. like that. You know, he's in good shape, and he lost some weight and got himself in better shape. And I don't know that it showed early in the year, but I think it showed when he started carrying the ball over 30 times a game. And uh, a lot of people feel like he gets stronger as it goes. And, 
This week, the plan isn't necessary to run them all those times. Uh, we've got a real important league game the week after, and um, we'll ride him hard in that league game because that's our key to success. Um, but it shows a guy who's tough. Um, he's in good shape, and he, he, he's one of those guys, you guys have all seen him, he benefits from the work. And the more work you give him, probably the better off he is. Probably like... Uh, uh, Marshawn Lynch, right, <laughs> yeah. for your Seahawks, who I know likes the work. Elijah likes the work. Any good memories from uh, the, the times that you've spent at Jordan Hare Stadium down at Auburn? You know, I've been there twice. Uh, I've got vivid memories. The first one wasn't great. We ended up in the highest regular season scoring game in 2010 when Cam Newton was there. Um, I think that was right in the middle of the year. I don't know. Everybody knew he was the phenom that he turned out to be. And, um, Ryan Mallett got knocked out legally by Nick Fairley in the, late in the first quarter, I think, and Tyler Wilson came in, and we went up and down the field on each other. We took the lead late in the third quarter, and then I remember Cam Newton kind of like deciding that that, that was not going to be the way that game ended, and he was phenomenal. He rode that, ran that quarterback power, and he just he dominated the game. It's probably why they were national champs. And then we went in there and beat them in 2012, which was cool. My wife made the trip. It was the wives' trip. She was undefeated at Arkansas, so good for her. And that was a great memory going in there. And our kids played well. We hit Kobe Hamilton on a 40-yard dagger on the first play of the game. Yeah, I got a lot of good memories. We hit Javante Hernan, who plays for the Chargers now, on a um, – Reverse pass that Coach Petrino worked on all week after practice with Brandon Mitchell throwing it and Javante catching it. And Javante caught it in the back right hand corner of the far end zone and that won the game. So, yeah, I got a lot of good memories of that place. Coach Petrino said it's, uh, it's, it's rather polite for an SEC <clears throat> atmosphere. Would you agree with that assessment? It is, yeah. You know, it seems like they're back off you a little bit on the field. Um, and they're, yeah, they're good fans. I mean, when we played them in 12, both teams were struggling, but they, they were all in and cheering hard, and I respect that. And it's a neat place to play. They do it right. When, you, when, you, when you're going up against a, a talented team like Auburn, what challenges does that present for your, for your scout team guys to kind of simulate such talented players? Yeah, that's a big challenge right there. Um, they're going to struggle to do that. That's why we do a lot of crossover, you know, so we're getting a better look, the NFL style of scouting. Um, what we have to really be good with is our fundamentals when you're playing guys that are probably faster and quicker and stronger than what you've been practicing against. you got to be great fundamentally. Um, and these guys will challenge us. Um, 8 and 55 are really good defensive ends. They're really fast. Uh, 95 and 1 are SEC three techniques uh, who are big. they got that butt that's wider than a refrigerator. They can run. And so we'll be challenged, but we have to be good fundamentally. And then we got to be really sharp mentally. That's generally where your best performances come from. And here we got to push ourselves. The scout team is probably not going to be able to do it. And we got to be self-driven to be great. Good. Thanks, Appreciate Chris. you guys. See you, man.